A meerkat on sentry duty scans his patch. This is South Africa's Addo Elephant National Park, and the meerkats share it with many neighbours, small and large. White storks flying down from the north are regular visitors to this apparently peaceful refuge. But trouble is brewing for the Addo gang. This is a very competitive and dangerous world. Intruders. The Addo gang stands firm as their rivals charge forward. Now they're in the Addo gang's territory, the intruders are slightly unsure of themselves. This is the moment the Addo gang have been waiting for. They charge. The neighbor's nerves break and the gang press home their advantage. Some of the invaders are trapped and are shown no mercy. The rest flee in disarray. The Addo gang have won this round. Although members of the gang may appear identical, each individual has his or her own special role and status. The lead male, Nkosi, is clearly recognisable by the black spot on the top of his head. He reinforces his status by drenching the ground with scent. He's also one of the most diligent guards in the group and is usually at the centre of social activities. This is Brown Eyes, the dominant female. Her status entitles her to priority in breeding. Currying favour with Brown Eyes is essential. Low-ranking females in particular must grovel before her. She's the queen. But the rulers of the whole park are the elephants. A herd is headed straight for the meerkat's burrow. One heavy step in the wrong place could be troublesome. Once the coast is clear, Nkosi is the first to emerge. Elephants are a nuisance rather than a real threat to the meerkats. The group's success depends on cooperative, unselfish behaviour. For these gangsters, strength is unity. A rigid pecking order generally ensures social harmony. But one rule is paramount. Brown eyes is boss. Whilst being pampered, she notices a low-ranking female foraging nearby. Her attack is unprovoked 
and savage. The harsh reality of gang life suddenly becomes only too apparent as other meerkats join in the mugging. By helping brown eyes now, they may avoid being bullied themselves in the future. Even though life in the gang is tough for some, it's undoubtedly better than being out on one's own. In the windy, dry season especially, finding food is the first priority. An active termite colony is a real bonanza. And a scorpion is a special treat for Nkosi. Worms and locusts are standard fare. And Nkosi will make short work of a sun spider. Perhaps the most valuable find is a clutch of tortoise eggs. Now it's each meerkat for himself. The feast soon deteriorates into an unseemly brawl. The change of season heralds a change for the Addo gang. Brown Eyes and her sisters have given birth. A new crop of fighters and sentries has swelled the group's numbers and the future looks bright indeed. The social hubbub around the new group members is so intense that the meerkats initially fail to notice the approach of a furtive stranger. Bandit, a nomadic male, has arrived. Nkosi glares at the trespasser, a blatant challenge to his authority. But Bandit is not here to oust Nkosi. Brown Eyes is his target. Having given birth, she's ready to mate again. Bandit sneaks forward towards the group. But the gang won't tolerate him coming any closer. Bandit ducks down a hole. The gang are relentless. But Bandit is a seasoned brawler. He gives as good as he gets. Their point made, the gang return to the burrow to lick their wounds. <laughs> this young male has been blooded for the first time, but in the tough gangland of Addo, it's unlikely to be his last. Nkosi, like Bandit, is aware that Brown Eyes is ready to mate, but top male or not, all she allows him is a mild hug. His every move is watched by Bandit.
some of the juveniles mistake courtship for play and join in. Cozy, however, hangs on. Down in the burrow, Brown Eyes Litter is unattended. Seeing this, the low-ranking female approaches inquisitively. Brown Eyes needs little excuse to put her down. As always, the beating is severe. And once again, other members of the gang are quick to join in the thuggery. When she resists no longer, the mob victoriously smear one another with scent, while the vanquished female lies humiliated at the feet of her uncaring tormentor. Harmony returns. The Addo gang settles down for a siesta. has things other than sleep on her mind. Out in the heat, Bandit gazes back at her. And when the group sets out to forage again, he sidles up towards her. Brown Eyes moves away from the others, and Bandit follows. Finally, hidden by a bush, he sees his chance, but Brown Eyes now plays hard to get. Oblivious to this clandestine courtship, Nkozi sticks diligently to the task of feeding Brown Eyes voracious youngsters. The unflagging bandit, ever watchful, cautiously approaches once more. But still she doesn't welcome him. Meanwhile, Nkozi, as always, stands guard. In the end, Bandit's persistence pays off. Objective achieved, Bandit will now move on. He'll visit other groups, other females, but almost certainly he'll be back when the next chance arises to mate with one of the Addo gang females. This way, new genes will flow into the group and, unknowingly, Nkozi, who is probably a very close relative of Brown Eyes, will help to raise young that Bandit has fathered. The low-ranking female, who is probably not related to the other dominant animals, tries once more to get the acceptance of the group. But while the top-ranking clique groom one another, the lower-ranking members spurn her. At least this time she's escaped a beating. On the lookout for predators, Nkozi notices another threat. A storm is brewing. Brown Eyes too recognizes danger and begins to move the babies to higher ground.
As the storm approaches, Ngozi stays at his post. Brown Eyes returns time and again until all the young are out of danger of drowning. Only when the rain begins in earnest does Nkosi head for the shelter of the burrow. When the rain stops, he is the first to emerge, cold and bedraggled. As night falls, the meerkats retreat underground. A fresh new dawn finds the Addo gang warming themselves in the first rays of the sun. With the rain comes an abundance of food for the meerkats. The good times are back. Now the submissive female has her best chance of acceptance by brown eyes. At last, she's admitted to the gang as Brown Eyes stoops to groom her. Some of the others are anxious. They've spotted a possible threat. But it's not a dangerous eagle just a harmless secretary bird. The rainy season continues, bringing welcome relief to all of Addo. The meerkat's dusty patch is transformed into a colorful paradise. And with the flowers come the insects, a feast for the meerkats and insect-eating birds like egrets. The babies are growing too, learning the skills they'll need to survive out here. To keep up in the gang, they have to be competitive and aggressive, particularly when food is involved. But some food is quite simply unreachable. An ostrich egg is just too hard for them to crack. It may not be eatable, but it still makes a good plaything for the inquisitive youngsters. All around, spring is in the air, but so is danger. Jackals rank with eagles as serious threats. The adult gang members immediately cluster around their smaller comrades. 
As long as they keep the jackal in view, they're safe. But once he disappears, they beat a hasty retreat to the opposite side of their range. There's much that the young gangsters must learn. For example, a hedgehog may sometimes look like another young meerkat, but it's much too prickly to hug. <coughs> and tortoises are not only bewildering when first encountered, but rather frightening too. Cobras always need to be treated with respect. The real menace, however, comes from the skies. Nkosi spots the martial eagle just in time. He shrieks a warning to the rest of the gang. This is no time for heroics, it's each mongoose for himself as they bolt for their hole. Ignoring the ever-present threats above ground, Nkosi emerges from the burrow alone. As the top male, he must patrol the boundaries of the gang's territory. His scent, smeared on the ground and the vegetation like bold chemical graffiti, proclaims a clear message. Keep out! But on these missions, alone and vulnerable, he needs to be specially alert. The crown plover had better watch out too. Her eggs are at risk. When Nkosi spots her, she immediately abandons her nest to distract him. The plover's mobbing drives him away from their eggs, but it also distracts his attention from the crucial business of looking out for danger. Too late, he sees the rival gang, some 20 strong, tearing down towards him. He dashes for the shelter of a burrow. But outnumbered, he has no chance. <coughs> Meerkat teeth are as sharp as daggers, and the neighbours show no mercy to their victim. It's their turn now, and they're making the most of it. Eventually, they lose interest. Leaving Nkosi for dead, they head back across the border. Without cover to conceal him, Nkosi has little chance of survival. As the day wears on, Brown Eyes begins to call for her partner.
She is far away from him and her calls are unheard. To have any chance at all, Nkosi must get back to his gang, but his wounds are serious. Between him and his group, the ground is open. Out there, he would be dangerously exposed, but his only hope is to go forward. For several hours, he struggles on. As evening approaches, he finally limps back to the main burrow. But he soon emerges alone. Then, away in the distance, he sees them, his gang. Reunited with their leader, the meerkats indulge in an orgy of greeting and grooming. Nkosi and Brown Eyes are together again. The submissive female, a sad figure, looks on as the group huddles together. She will never achieve high status, but now at least she's spared the bullyings. The pampered brown eyes, meanwhile, is becoming heavy with bandits young. Wandering the gang lands, he's sure to visit the Addo gang again. And when he does, he will once more try and probably succeed in avoiding the watchful eye of Nkosi.